All right, so here's the stuff that I grabbed. And when I'm getting ready, I always take hold over the kitchen table. Make sure you put, like, I put a towel down, and that way, if I drop any screws, they're not going to go rolling off the table and get lost somewhere. Plus, I'm not scratching up my wife's table, so she's not going to be mad at me. All right, so let's talk about the case first. So this is a, a Lian Lee uh, Land Cool 2. Um, the original, they have like a Land Cool 2X. It's the newer model, but I like this older model. It's been out for over a year. Um, and on the top, you see, you've got this one is for the change the color. This one's changed the mode. The, there are LEDs behind uh, these screens, and you can light them up and change different colors, whatnot. You got two USB ports, and then there's a, a little plug here, and this is for a USB Type C. Um, that's an extra thing. But what the big thing they really liked about this case is, I can get into it without um, screws. So you can see these side panels kind of swing out, and this bottom one kind of close up, and they have magnets. And again, you just hit the side and grab that. Boom, and I'm in and I can do whatever I need to do. Like if there's a fan that's making noise or something like that, I'm all set. Plus, I also like the filter on the top is just a mesh with magnets. And I can just pop it on. And in the back, the filter for the power supply is right here. So again, I don't have to open the case to get that out. It's right there. Yeah. Sorry about that, the case is kind of new so everything's kind of stiff. But you can see nowadays on these gamer cases, the power supplies mount down here at the bottom. And <laughs> they either have a solid or a, an opening, or I'm sorry, a vent on the top. But they, you can filter, you can push it so that it grabs air from the underneath the case or from above the case. Now you might ask, why would I ever do that? Well, a lot of people put their PCs on the floor. So the carpet can actually get up here and block those holes and restrict airflow. So in that case, then you'd want to put it, have the, the air sucking part, you know, at the top. Also, it has these removable drive bays um, where you can put in your extra hard drives if you wanted to. And again, my big thing was I can, it's keyless open. I don't have to pull out any screws. Um, and I can get to both filters without um, taking off any screws or have to open the case. All right, so that's the case. All right, here's the motherboard. Now, when you're at the store and you're looking at motherboards, make sure you're checking the boxes. Like, I don't know if you can see this little dent there. That's always bad, and then there's kind of a crease here. Um, I don't have any problem start going through the shelf and pulling boxes out and sitting them on the floor looking for the box that I want. Uh, luckily, this one, though, that's kind of minor. I mean, there's no way that went all the way down to the motherboard, and you can see, like, the motherboard sits way down in there. All right, let me pull this out for you. So pretty cool, all white, and you get a ton of extras. Republic of Gamers, and I think those are all like uh, decals. I don't know if you can see them in the camera. And all the cables, and a nifty keychain. Woo! All right, here's some other stickers, decals. Um, so I, again, I'm a big fan of Asus. Um, I like their software, uh, and that you always get a bunch of junk. Any keyboard that you buy, you always get a ton of junk inside the cases. I'm sorry, any uh, motherboard, duh. I also save the motherboard boxes. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and that way, if I have any extra parts or things that I, I don't need at this time, like extra parts from the case, you know, to put it, screw things in or whatnot, um, I always throw them in the, the motherboard box, and that's the one piece that I save when I'm all done. And that way, I have a motherboard box with each PC, and if uh, I ever need something for that PC, I just go find the motherboard box, open it up, and there's my stuff. Because you'll find stuff... Um, again, so like especially with screws, later on, like two, three years down the road, you'll add a hard drive, and you're like, oh crap, I need a screw to fit my case, you know, for this hard drive. Um, and it's nice just to be able to go back to the box and, and pop that in. All right, motherboards also come with a CD. Now, don't throw that away, but just put it in the box that it came with. And the reason for that is, by the, by the time they create the drivers and they put them on that CD uh, and they burn those CDs and they package the stuff and they send it to the stores, it goes to, first it goes to a warehouse, a wholesaler, um, like Ingram Micro, and it sits there for, I don't know, months and then they ship out to the, the stores that purchase these things and it sits on the store shelves for six months. Um, those drivers are way out of date. So the first thing you want to do uh, before you like all your parts come in if you're ordering stuff is you want to go to the motherboard manufacturer's website and you want to download all the newest drivers. 
Um, I tend to put mine on a USB stick because usually the the motherboard like the USB works right away right, from the piece, uh, ugh, from the motherboard. Um, a lot of times you can't rely on the the NIC driver working to just go out from the motherboard itself um, uh, because you don't have a NIC driver. Now I tend to mount the CPU um, and I'm going to put the M2 drive in because it's going to go underneath this panel. Um, and I'm going to put the water cooler on there all before I install the motherboard into the case because it just makes it easier. For the CPU, obviously, it just kind of drops in here, and that's really no big deal. That could be in the case. But the cooler that goes onto it, you can see these little holes here, 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 and here. I don't know if you can see those, but I'll put the pen in there. That's where the, the cooler is going to attach. Um, so I need to get underneath the motherboard in order to stick that in. So obviously, it's much easier to do it with the motherboard not attached to the uh, case. All right, let's talk more about the motherboard. Now, these little things here, um, these are called headers, and you see they're, they're all over the side of the board. And they're for different things, like these ones for USB, uh, these ones are fans, this one might be the front uh, panel connectors, these are the six SATA connectors that come with the, P the motherboard, and then that's uh, the main power, and then there's also over here, let me get this, there are specific CPU fan um, headers and then these little white ones are the red green blue red green blue comes in two configurations there's one for like um, I don't know if all the lights are gonna be the same color there's one for each lights programmable so that's why there's two different headers on there to plug in for your red green blue control all right now on this thing here the screws come off and I guess I did not pull that out enough And then, and that this piece here acts as a heat sink um, against the uh, little drive that you put in there. And you can see here is where that little drive connector is. Remember, it goes in at a 45 degree angle, and then it kind of drops down. And you can see how small these drives are. I mean, there's my hand, um, and there's the drive. So we'll pop that in. And I'm trying to. Wiggle that in. Remember, so now it's in at a 45 or 30 degree angle. And then we're going to put that screw in there. And I'm going to need two hands for that. So let me do that right quick. All right. When you're dealing with the M.2 drives, you can, I don't know if you can see this in the video. Sorry, my dog's all freaking out because the mailman's here. There's a rubber pad right here on the board. Uh, and there's also these three little hole or three little screw holes. And what happens is if your drive is one sided, you, you leave that pad on there. And then on the other side of the cover, uh, there's a piece of tape that has like a little rubber pad um, to kind of smush it in there to make sure it's all nice and comfortable and doesn't like do anything weird or bend or whatever. But in order to do that, when I put this in, let me kind of show you, uh, get in there and I push this down. This plate actually does not plug in here to the drive, the drive screw where my finger is kind of moving. It actually plugs in to this one here. So if I grab this and, ooh, you know what, that's not the right way. Let's do the other way. That's not the, oh, maybe that is the right way. Maybe that's how it goes. I probably should have paid attention when I took that off, but so it does not go underneath the drive. So what we need to do, and you can see like this kind of goes all the way down and it's probably not supposed to. Um, we need to put the, a little standoff, which is this little sucker here. Yeah, I'm not even showing you. That's what they call a standoff. And you can see the other side has a hole. My video uh, skills are not that great. And then it has this little tiny, see if I can find it, micro screw that we're going to try to put in, and that's going to be miserable. So luckily I had this little jeweler screwdriver and I was able to get that little sucker in. But I'll tell you what, that thing took me forever to get that in there. All right, so now I'm gonna put the cover on there and I'm gonna take this tape off and then try to stick that on there and get it in the right the first time. So what I did so it didn't stick in the wrong place is I kind of have it tilted up so it's not touching the drive because it's sticky on the other side. And I put that first screw in there. So now all I theoretically should have to do is just lay it on there and it should be right. And then I'll screw it in and we'll see how it goes. 
All right, by some miracle, I got that in there. So now it's all nice and tight, doesn't wiggle. Now make sure again, you're not putting too much um, effort on those screws. You should just put, once it gets tight, you wanna put two fingers on the screwdriver and just use those two fingers to kind of turn. Um, again, it just needs to be like snug. It does not need to be cranked. And for the M2 things, like they don't show you anything in the instructions, and you can kind of see here about putting that standoff in there and adding the screw, but you can see it here. They add, it's always here. It just says five. And they don't tell you what the heck five is. Like it's not numbered anywhere in the manual uh, about that standoff. The package didn't say five, anything like that. Um, and again, that's just the step. So like four, you put it in, um, and then five, you push it down and put the screw in. So, but the screws for the M2 should come in the motherboard, but the standoffs and the stuff to attach the motherboard to the case typically come in with the case. Uh, one last thing about the M2, um, all the, the documentation was underneath the lid and so it didn't like fall out and this was jammed in there. So unless you realize that this was heavy, you would never know that your documentation was in there. And again, I always put all the documentation in the motherboard box and that way I have everything together. And then also as you're building, I never throw things away. Like I'll keep this box and stuff there. And that way, if there's a problem and something's not working when I'm all done, I can put, take it off and, and take it back to the manufacturer, the, whatever store I bought it from or, the, or send it back to the manufacturer. And I still have the original packing. So don't throw anything away until you've checked and everything works. All right, so here's what, what comes with the processor. Again, you get a little fancy sticker, yay, in the little book that you will never use because there's nothing really big in there. And then there's all this cardboard mounting stuff, and it's all just hollow just to keep the chip safe. All right, the CPU gets a little bit tricky. There is a screw right here, and you don't want to touch that screw, and it takes a different kind of, it's not like a, a Phillips head or something like that. I think it's called a Torx end. Um, don't mess with that because that's kind of put in by the manufacturer. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab this little metal piece and we're going to push down and pull it out. And then this lifts up. And then you see like it backed off from that screw. And then we lift that up. We, we need to take this black piece off. Yeah. And you see these little tabs. I'll probably point with that. So you can see these little tabs here. That's what pushes down on the CPU and puts it in place. So now let me lift that up. All right, so now we just gonna need to drop the CPU in there, push this down, and lock her all up. All right, so here's the processor, and notice it's got these little. Uh, oh, geez, it would help if I show that. Like it's got these little tabs that kind of hang out, and those tabs are gonna hit these little pieces when this comes down, and that's what's gonna push it down into place and, and apply the force um, to keep it down. Now, when you're pulling the the CPU out. Um, do not touch the, what is it? I, don't, I think this is a nickel plating over the top, I'm not quite sure, um, but don't touch that. Um, make sure you hold it by the sides and just let it get it as close as you can here and then kind of drop it in. Um, any of the oils from our fingers can break down the thermal paste that's going to be applied there to um, attach it to the fan heatsink combo. Uh, and then over time that the paste breaks down, you lose your contact and then your CPU overheats and you have issues. So don't touch that part. So it, it theoretically only goes in one way, and then we're going to put this lid back on. And now we need to push this stuff down, and that's going to apply force. And there's a lot of pressure on my finger here. Make sure that that's underneath there. These are pushing down on the tabs um, that I mentioned here, um, and that that is in place all the way. And now you're good, and your CPU's in. All right, here's the CPU cooler that I grabbed. And again, the big reason was because it was white. Um, Theoretically, like if you watch some of the, the, I guess, technical reviewers and stuff, like uh, Linus Tech Tips, um, Jay's Two Cents, uh, oh, Gamer Nexus, um, they will actually show you uh, um, the air coolers actually do a better job of cooling the CPUs than these um, liquid coolers like this, these all-in-ones. Uh, and it's only by a few degrees, so but so I guess it all depends on if you're going for looks or if you really plan on overclocking. Now, I'm not going to overclock this right away. What I tend to do with my kids is when I build them a PC, I don't overclock or, or do anything to adjust for speed. And then after a year or two, when they start whining, oh, damn, my PC's slow, I need a new PC, then I go in and I, I run a benchmark on their PC. Then I go in and I overclock stuff and do some play with, fiddle with some settings. And then I show them the new benchmarks. Hey, look, you know, and then I tell them, uh, oh, I just put in a new processor. You're all good now. And they, they eat that crap up. Then they're good for another two years. 
And it, no matter what you do to their PC when they first get it, uh, in a year or two it's going to be, ah, Dad, this is slow now. Well, it's because you're downloading a bunch of bad stuff. All right, so here's what came in the box. You get two fans, uh, and these fans are really heavy. I'll have to bring one to class and show you guys, because it's kind of nice. Um, this is the back plate that we're going to use. Uh, it's going to go underneath my motherboard. Um, here are some screws. Uh, this is like an adapter piece if you're, gonna, if you're doing going AMD. There's a connector for the top piece. And you can see the top piece already has a thermal compound applied. So you don't need to apply your regular thermal compound. But if you ever do, like if you're going to do an air cooler or something like that, um, I tend to use this, this little Arctic Silver thing. It's like five, six bucks, um, new egg. And you can see um, you get quite a lot in there. You probably get enough for four or five um, CPU installations. And of course, uh, they did not ship me any kind of directions at all. They're just assuming you're going you're gonna to figure stuff out. Way to go, Corsair. So after going to Corsair's website and trying to figure it out, this goes obviously underneath our motherboard, and these little pieces here on the ends are adjustable. They'll actually move in and out. And we're going to put that on the back, and they're going to pop through those holes here on the motherboard. And then we're going to use these standoffs, plug it in, and then we're going to put this on the top. Now, these standoffs here, these smaller ones, are for the I'm sorry, AMD chip, uh, which we don't have. All these parts here are for the AMD chip. These long screws are to go into the fan and attach them to the block here. And then these small ones are to attach the block to your case wherever you're going to place it. And then that goes into the pump head. So, simple enough, huh? Oh, let's talk about these cables. So there's all these cables that come off. This one goes to the CPU fan, and then this is power, uh, SATA connector power, for the pump head. So this one will control the speed of the fan based on the CPU temperature, and then this one will go into the, the SATA for power for the, again. So the pump is all in there. And then this is for uh, red, the RGB, the red, green, blue lights, the controller. And then these are power connectors for the fans. So lots of crazy cables. All right, so the first thing I did was I, I got this in there in place and got all these through the holes and adjusted the where the pins need to be because remember these pins kind of move up and down in these slots and it was kind of a pain in the butt. Now I'm going to remove the tape, stick it on there. All right, so there it is. Now it's all theoretically stuck on there. I'm kind of pushing a little bit. Make sure that your motherboard is not on something where you're going to push down and break something on the motherboard. I'm just using this cardboard. All right, I'm going to flip it over and try to make sure that that stays in place. And then I'm going to put in the standoffs. All right, so at this point, I just threw it down on the table, got rid of the, um, oh, crap, what the heck you call it, the cardboard that was sitting on it. And you can see now in these holes, we've got the little screw heads that are kind of sticking in. So I'm going to grab these long standoffs, pop those in. Ah, I get my big fat fingers in there. Oh, my gosh. Now, I'm just going to do these finger tight now, um, because when we put the thumb screws in there, we're going to actually add a little pressure with a screwdriver, so that'll help drive them in a little bit more um, and keep everything nice and safe and strong and secure. All right, so now we're just going to take off this plastic and then mount this. Now, let's talk about mounting this sucker on the CPU. Now, in all the documentation and any picture you see from Corsair, it's like this. So, and that way you can kind of see the Corsair logo the right way and the tubes go off on the right side. Now, Gamer Nexus, uh, I think that was them, they did a really cool thing where they actually cut some of the radiator so you could see like where the water levels were uh, and then it did that on the pump as well. And they showed you how um, these pumps and these AIOs, remember AIO is just all in one, have between three and 10% of air inside there. And when you mount them where the, the radiators are, where the tubes are on the top, you can actually get air pockets that, that form and uh, you can get the same thing in your pump where then it's just kind of pumping air and you're not getting the, the cooling that you need uh, on, the, on the CPU. So because Corsair is mounted like this and you can't change the direction of this head, we're going to put this like they do on the box and I'm just going to mount this, uh, the radiator, on the top of the case. Um, but theoretically, you want to mount those so that the tubes are down. A lot of cases and stuff that you see, the tubes are up, and that causes air bubbles, or not air bubbles, but pockets of air that get in there, and then your pump's not working, 
and you can actually burn those pumps out. So if you ever, you'll see a lot of reviews where these AIOs, the oh, thing only lasted a year or two. Um, and then if you look at the picture of their case, they had the tubes mounted you know, at the top. Um, or they had this piece mounted um, like this, so these tubes were on the top. So you don't want the tubes on the top. Now with Corsair, again, their pictures are always like this, so I'm going to mount it just like they show in the picture. And then at least I have like that plausible denial and say, hey, you know, this is what you showed me, so this had to be correct. Now, I don't have the screws in tight. I just have all the thumb screws in. You can see, like, right now, it'll slide left and right and do different things. So just get it positioned where you want it, and then do them in a cross pattern. So I'm going to do this one, then this one, and then this one, and then that one. Um, and I'm going to tighten them up. All right, so all the screws are finger tight, and I try to keep things straight. So when you're moving that around before you tighten it up, you want to make sure that this block stays straight um, so that when it's inside the case, it looks all nice and neat. And then with those, you can see there's a big screw hole there for a screwdriver. Uh, inside those. Now I'm going to tighten them up and now I'm going to do the same way. So left, you know, cross, down, that way. And again, you don't need to crank these. They just need to be snug. Um, there's no screw on a case or PC build that you ever have to put, you know, excessive force on there. No maximum effort. So dead, so easy on the Deadpool stuff. All right, two more quick tips. Don't take this piece off and expose the thermal paste until you're ready to apply the, the pump onto the CPU. And also make sure that you have the board on something um, that's where the board's not gonna snap. So if I had this on like some, let's say standoff, so it was kind of like sitting up, when you're cranking down those screws, you can actually push down on the motherboard and you can actually bend and break some of the traces in there. So make sure it's on something flat um, when you're tightening those screws on that. All right, now we're ready to slap her in the case. I right, remember screws to attach the motherboard to the case are going to be with the case. And again, one of the reasons why I love the Lian Lee is the, the glass panel comes off um, just off these little hinges and it just slides right off and you're all good to go. So I'm going to pull this piece up and if I open up this drive tray, there's all the screws. Yeah. Guess I got to take the whole thing out. Slap that back in. So I've got plenty of space now. I'm going to pull these fans off because I bought some uh, some red, green, blue fans that all work kind of together uh, and they use kind of the same hub. So I'm going to pull those fans off and, and you can see the standoffs are already attached inside this case, which is nice. Normally when you buy, especially, I don't know if it's just the premium case or the cheap cases, but you have to put the standoffs in yourself, which is kind of a pain in the butt. All right, make sure you keep things separate so you can see on this little uh, little squeezy pad thing, I, I got my screws for the fans that go into the radiator. And then over here, I have all the stuff I'm going to throw away, all the packaging and extra. This is, those are the AMD components that I'm not using. Um, so I, keep the, I always keep everything until the build is ready. Um, and then I, that way I can ship stuff back and I can include all the parts. And that's it. All right, you're gonna get a bunch of screws with things and you're gonna have extra screws. So these are the screws that came out of the fan where they were mounted you know, inside the case. These are all the screws for the motherboard, which is probably way too many. Now what I tend to do is I keep things separate and then later on when I'm done and I'm putting things away, I try to remember like, okay, these, if these were the motherboard screws, I try to put them in one of these little extra bags that, that, like, that I had from all the other crap that came out. And then just put a post-it note in there, you know, these are motherboard screws, or these are fan screws, or these are screws for fans in the case. So you can get the little tiny post-it notes, or you can get like a little um, uh, screw organizer where you can have different things in different trays, um, and however you want to do it, that way you can organize that stuff. Alright, one last thing, and I know it's a little too late, but you can see here on these cables, so these two came up, and this one is up jammed up underneath that, and I don't want to take that off, because I've got that mounted now on top of the processor, and the thermal paste is already kind of applied. So I'm kind of stuck with this cable underneath there, but for me that's okay, because I'm just going to run that up through there, and then in this hole, and then around the back um, for my cable management. So that worked for me in this case, but had I got that and stuck in some other side of the thing, that would never work. All right, so once you put the motherboard in the case, you can then decide like where it's going to go or where the radiator is going to go if you're going to use a radiator. And you kind of move it to the top. Like I think I'm going to put this one on the front because um, I kind of like that. Although I don't know if that's going to hit the video card. So the video card is going to go here and I can't have those in the way. So I may end up having to readjust that and put that up and kind of do something like that. So, but right now I'm just going to put this on the side. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to mount these holes into the standoffs. And I'm really close. 
there. Whatever I just did, that kind of pushed it in place. And so now I'm up on the standoff, so you can see the motherboard is not touching. I'm going to get my whole fingernail underneath there. And now I can put those little screws in this pack, in those slot holes, and good. Oh, and I also, you make sure you um, unapply the uh, sticky stuff or the tapes and stuff. So I'm going to pull that board out of there and, and pull that off and remount that. All right, depending on what kind of motherboard you buy and how expensive it is, um, and if it's designed for gaming or just, you know, use, um, you might get one of these little Mickey Mouse plates. Uh, and I call these Mickey Mouse because it's, you had to stick this into the case here in the slot in the back and kind of pound it in, and then your motherboard, the ports would all slide in there. Now, nowadays, these gaming boards, that they're, they have these all-in-one blocks that you don't have to do that anymore, and it looks like... That so you yeah so you don't have to fit anything into the little the little uh, stencils which and you can see these little tab things hanging off the sides of these uh, like that uh, they were a pain I, I hated those I'm so glad that they went to something like this nowadays but again it all depends on how much you pay for your motherboard. Now case manufacturers have to provide screws for all the different kind of motherboards out there. So you can see this one here has a big, um, let's say standoff. Uh, and I would imagine that's for thicker motherboards. Maybe there's a certain type of motherboard that you would use that. So obviously I'm not gonna be using that because my motherboard's not that thick. And then I've got these two little screws. And then, so what I do is, it looks like the threads are very similar on those. I don't know if you can kind of see those good. I tend to try one in each hole and see which one fits better without the amount of force. And for me, it turns out it's this, the little one. And usually they, they have an extra like lip on the top. Let me see if I can show you that. So that's the one that I tend to use to secure the motherboard inside of the case. All right, I don't know if you can see the difference from these screws, but the one on the left has that little lip I was talking about. The one on the right does not. And if I put them down here, let's see if I put them sideways. Get them to stay. So the one on the left um, is the one that I use for the motherboard to, to secure it into the, the standoffs. The one on the right is a little bit thicker and doesn't really go in. So now from this point of view, you can really kind of see the little lip that's on the one on the left. Um, so again, that's the one that I use. Remember, if you start to put it in and it's tight from the very beginning, it's wrong. You're going to strip the threads. And it's very easy to strip the threads in these standoffs, which is why a lot of motherboards uh, or cases give you some extra standoffs in case you screw one or two of them up. So just make sure you use the correct screw. All right, your motherboard is secured with nine screws, and they go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So three on the back, three on the front, and three in the middle. Now, occasionally you get something like that hole there that I've already dropped about 14 screws in and never got one in the hole. So luckily, my wife has this putty sticky stuff. We don't use any thumbtacks or stuff to put the kids' posters on the wall. She uses this stuff, which is terrible because it pulls off the drywall stuff when you're done. But I've got, oh crap, where the heck did I put that? I put a little dab of it on top of the screw, and then it's going to hold onto the screwdriver as I put it in like that and I'm gonna get that in there line that up get it in the hole and I'm golden and again you can leave that little stuff on there it's no big deal and we're in there Woo! And that's why it's always nice when your spouse comes over because she hears you cussing and they provide wonderful ideas. And you can see like I got a ton of extra screws from that. Um, again, I'll still I'll put them in one of those little bags um, and I'll just save them in the box just in case I may someday have to use them again. I don't know if you can read that if I'm close enough, but that's for an AIO fan, which is what I'm going to use. Normally your air cooler goes onto a CPU fan, but this motherboard has a special connector just for the AIO pump or the power for the, that. So that's what I'm going to use. So now when I look at this um, cord, it's got two pieces and basically you have to strip off or, or peel down the small one because this one's going to be the power. So that's going to go in the back. 
uh, through the, a hole in the back. And then this one needs to go in here, and I need to do something with all the extra cord. So I'm going to plug that in now, and we'll cable manage that near the end. And that's shown here, and that's why it's a good idea to look over the motherboard manual before you do anything. Um, so that you know like where things are going to be connected. Now, because I've got the case on its side, um, I'm going to slap in the memory while I'm here. And uh, the memory, you can see like they'll show you the configuration. So if you have one stick, you do on the left. If you have two sticks, you do it in the middle. And if you have four sticks, you just fill all the slots. So I'm going to fill up A2 and B2. And then again, you can kind of look here. They show you that little diagram where A2 and B2 is. And then if you look at the, the ports themselves, I don't know if I can show you this. Somewhere on there, they should be listed, you know, A2 and B2, or have their A numbers, but I don't think I can find them with this little camera. But you get the idea. But again, you can also see them just from the layout here uh, in the manual. So we've put memory in a class. You guys understand how that stuff works. So again, you just get that packet and you get this little safety information. Uh, so I'm going to slap those in. Now I know at the school, both ends were able to move, you know, forward and back. But on this one, the, these posts here are static, like it's all one unit, they, they don't move at all. And just the, the back, this side, uh, actually moves. So I just want to point that out, because again, every motherboard could be different, you never know what you're going to get. Alright, our memory's all in, we're all nice and set. Um, now normally, now if you're going to use the fans that come with the, the radiator, I would have installed the fans before I put this in inside the case, that way they're already there. Um, but I'm waiting for some new fans and they're shipping today, so I've got to kind of wait. That's why it's kind of sitting there. Alright, so now we're going to open this sucker up and we're going to put in the power supply. Alright, so here's the inside of the, the right side of the case, and you can see this one has covers over everywhere. Ooh, and I don't know what just dropped. Oh, the radiator, great. All right, and they're supposed to be thumb screws, but I'm gonna have to use a screwdriver on these. So you can see if I take this one off as well, I could have installed the AIO after I put the motherboard in. So that was also a possibility. So again, we're gonna route all our cables stuff through here in the back. These are plates for a, uh, a SSD, the, the little 2.5 ones. Uh, and then the power supply goes back down here. All right, then what's nice is, I don't know if you can see it here, but there's like a little gasket on all the thumb screws um, so that in there it's rubber so that nothing will rattle inside the case um, So you can just snug them up and you're all good All right when I got his m2 drive they only had the one terabyte model So I also got him an extra two terabytes on this little crappy crappy um, uh, Western digital blue SSD and I'm gonna just mount that to here uh, and then put that back in the case All right, so here's that drive mounted now and you can see even on the side panels I could get four of those mounted if I wanted to. And then I want airflow to kind of like go here into the power supply. So I removed this because I'm not going to use any mechanical hard drive. So, and I don't need these. If for some reason um, I put more than five or more than four, so I could do one, two, three, four. And then you can also mount them um, here. And I think this tray, so you've got plenty of spaces to mount those little SSDs. And I don't plan to ever do mechanical hard drives ever again. Uh, as a matter of fact, just this summer, I had to throw out like nine of them that I had just... Why do IT guys save all this kind of crap? Like, I'll save this. I'll never use this, but I'll save it. If you watch some of these guys' videos, like um, Jay's Two Cents, he's probably got like uh, 10 megabit NIC cards and 14.4 modems in the back on in the some of the racks that he has behind him in that studio. So, for some reason, I don't know what it is, but IT guys tend to keep crap. We're just hoarders. Uh, it's always like, oh, you never know. <sighs> really? <laughs> Alright, this is EVGA's um, 850 watt power supply, the Supernova. Um, and again, they all, all power supplies typically have a rating. and they, I think it's like silver, gold, and platinum. There might be one after that, so I always try to get at least gold. And I tend to stick with modular power supplies, um, so that I can just put in just the cables that I need. Um, in the old day, and wow, there's a lot of cables in this. Holy mackerel. It's like a cable party. Ah, I got stuff all falling everywhere. I need to put these somewhere else. Um, you get some, oh, those are some nice EVG little tie downs. That's kind of cool. Uh, a little adapter. Some chiclets. <laughs> and the four screws to hold it in. All right, so let me kind of show you what it looks like when I pull all these cables out of here. And 
nice jammed in here in the foam. Da 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 da. All right, let me get this out of here. All right, most power supplies have some kind of fan on one side, and then they have like a grate on the other side. So what this fan does is it sucks cool air in from this fan port, and then it blows it out the back of your PC out through this side. So when you mount these, so just like we talked about, we can mount it so that the, that the intake is at the bottom or the intake is on the top. So again, if you're gonna put it in like a carpeted area and there's something that might obstruct this, like even this um, towel could can obstruct some of the airflow going in. So in that case, you might wanna put it on the top and make sure that like there's something blowing across here so we can blow some air into that. Uh, now in my case, he's gonna put it on a, a desk so he's going to have plenty of room, so we're just going to use this bottom one. Uh, plus the bottom one has the filter, which is the way it's, and that's the way the case is designed. So we're going to go that route. So we're going to mount the case like this, so this is the bottom. And you can see these power supplies are designed like that. So there's one side that has the, the writing the right way, and there's another side that has the writing upside down. And that way, no matter which way you mount it, whether if I mount it up, the other side would show, and if I mount it down, then that side's going to show. So it's going to show the right way, at least on one side. Oh, actually, so on the, the left side, so that you can see it. So let me put this in the case and kind of show you what it's going to look like. All right, so ours is going to mount this way. And you might notice there's these little rubber standoffs, and that's, again, to keep any vibrations from creating noise inside your case. And also, one thing I also want to point out, um, sometimes the bottom of your power supplies have, like, a metal cage over the fan port uh, that kind of sticks out. So if you've got something like that, you're going to have to make sure that you're careful and you mount it um, in the case correctly so that it's not pressing up against something. Now, luckily in this case, it does not have one. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So there's nothing here. This is all flat. But sometimes, and you can see how flat that is, sometimes you have a cage that mounts on top of this um, to keep little fingers and things from touching the fan blades. And that sticks out a little bit, so you'll have to be careful with that. Now, I don't plan on using the power cables that came with the power supply, so I, I dropped another, what, 60 bucks, and I got these white and black cables. Um, they just look nicer, plus I'm going to, kind of going for that white design. I'm going to do like a, a light blue lighting in this case with the, the white cables. You can get these sleeved cables, like in all kinds of different colors, shapes, sizes. Uh, they have some that have lights on them, you know, the RGB LEDs. Um, so... However funky you want to get, you can get with your cables. Um, but I'll, I'll still save this big pile of cables I got. Uh, why? Because IT guys are pack rats. So power supplies are universal the way they mount. Uh, they only have four screws and they're all the same. It's always one, two. There's two in the corners. Uh, there's one that's offset here that's not on a corner. And then this one's offset a little bit as well. And that way you can kind of line it up. But they're, they're all kind of universal. Um, any power supply you buy is typically going to fit almost any case. Unless you get some weird proprietary stuff. Make sure when you're dragging the power supply in, you don't move these little um, rubber pieces off of their thing. Because again, they're just stuck on there. Uh, the first time I slid that in, I actually pulled one of those off. All right, so that's the power supply kind of in there. And you kind of, I don't know if you kind of, you probably can't really see it in those holes. Uh, but now the holes all line up. Now this one sits on those little rubber things and sits perfectly still. Uh, nice and level. Now, some of them are actually held in place by those screws, which is always kind of scary when you think about it because these four little screws hold the thing up and these things can weigh a ton. So I'll put the screws in, then we're all set. All right, so there it is mounted with the four screws. Uh, you can see I always make sure that the power button is turned off. And I don't know what that eco thing is. I imagine it just saves power. But those screws I tend to put in as tight as I can get them. Um, now in this case, again, it doesn't really matter because it's sitting on nice little rubber pads and it's not suspending itself. But on top mounted power supplies where the power supply is actually um, held in place by those four screws and just hangs down, um, you, you definitely don't want any play in those screws. You want them to be as snug as possible. Now, if I had a case that did not open up on both sides and give me easy access to that power supply, I would have put the cables in prior to mounting the power supply. But again, because on this case, I can just get my whole arm in there, I can just leave it go, and I'm fine. All right, now comes the hard part. I got five uh, RGB fans coming in. So I gotta figure out where to place them. I know I gotta put two on the radiator, um, but if I put the radiator on the, on the, on the front like it is now, um, I can put one other fan on the top, one fan on the bottom, and then one on the back. And they would provide light all the way throughout the case, and that would be cool. But if I put the radiator on the top, 
then I'm gonna that's gonna be two so then I need to put two on the right and then I only have one left do I put it at the bottom or do I put it in the back and then you have to think about how's air gonna go into your case um, there's positive pressure and negative pressure you know if I put more air into the case than can actually theoretically go out through the little vents in the back um, that's positive pressure and that way we, we were forcing all air extra air inside the case out the back which is theoretically what we want now there's also negative pressure where we have more fans pulling air out of the case um, and kind of creating maybe like a, a, a kind of a vacuum situation inside the case that's negative pressure so either one will work um, I just don't know which one I want to go with you just you want to have like a nice steady flow of air uh, in and out of the case uh, and that's where the the new designed uh, Land Cool 2 case out of the Land Cool X, the whole front is mesh. Um, I like this one just because it had the lights that I could program, um, and it was cheap. It was only 90 bucks, uh, and it gave me access to everywhere else, like on the case, like I, everything was toolless. So there we go. All right, so I'm gonna stop this now because I gotta wait for my fans to come in, and then we'll do a part two.